Today I'm going to talk about Python 3 lists and if you go to my home page here click on schedule and click on any of these links it will take you to the schedule for the course. Uh, we're now looking at lists so I'll click on the lists link uh, just to remind you we'll be doing labs four labs on lists these are the links to the references on lists and of course we'll be using the example programs but if you click on lists this will take you to my document on lists at this address and I'm just going to scroll down and introduced, introduce lists now so far we've been using simple variables uh, so for example to store exam results we could say result 1 is assigned 67, 95 is assigned to result 2, 58 is assigned to result 3 and so on. Now if you only have a few scores uh, this method is fine but if you're from a large college and you have to store 2000 results this would be very tedious and likely to have errors in your typing so there is another way to get around this so let's think about first the simple variables and this is what we've been doing so far now after a statement like this python reserves an area of memory which it refers to by the variable name that you chose and the variable name is not actually storing the value but it's storing the address of where the value is being held in memory so imagine that if we're storing 67 to result one variable result one is actually storing the address in memory where your value is being held now normally we don't need to worry about where it is in memory all you really need to know is that 67 is being accessed by the variable name result one so let's not worry too much about the memory considerations at this point. So now a list is a very useful variable because we can store many values using one variable name. So you can consider a list variable like result as a line of boxes. Each of these boxes is actually memory and each box is referred to by a number now we call this number the subscript or the index it always starts at zero it always starts at zero for python it may start at a different number if you have a different language now the line of boxes in this case this illustration this is a list and a list variable is given a name just like a simple variable and each of the boxes of the list is referred to by a number. So for example, result variable, the list variable called result, this one has got eight boxes starting at index zero and going to seven. And we refer to each of these indexed variables by the index number in square brackets after the name of the list. So we say result square bracket zero is referring to this piece of memory and whatever is stored in there. Result one is referring to this box here, this piece of memory here. Just for uh, completeness, this particular name result square bracket zero is known as an indexed variable. Now the whole list is called result and has eight indexes starting at zero now the index is also known as the subscript so I might talk about a subscript or an index and each of these boxes is known as an element so we say this is element zero element one element two so you may hear these different words referring to lists okay so now the important thing with Python is that the elements of a list maybe of any data type so you could store for example an integer in one box and a string in another box and a boolean in another box of the list variable so what i'm going to do now is 
here we've got some example programs and we can re you can go to look at the example programs the list example programs start at number 07-01 and I recommend that you go and have a look at those now to get to the example programs just go to my home page <coughs> click on Python when you find it and then you can click on the example Python 3 programs here and you can also link to the videos here now the example uh, programs we're going to be starting at programs beginning with 07 so go down to look for the 07 and here's the first one you can copy and paste that one and see how it runs now what I'm going to do is go straight to Python I'm going to open up a Python window and I'm now going to just give you a small introduction to Python programs using lists and then I'll continue on the next video to go into a bit more detail so we can create a list in different ways we can start with an empty list and add to it or we can create a list in one statement so I could do something like this result or I could say results now it lists always use square brackets so here let's say I want to store I've got five students maybe I want to store their results so put their results in separated by a comma uh, and there we have our now what I've done there I need to put an assignment there so here we've got results is assigned these values and these are list elements now let's just print results now when I run this what it's going to do is print the whole list and you'll see when it prints it shows you the square brackets is it letting you know that this is a list and that each item in the list or each element is separated here by a comma and let's let's just print the first element so if I want to print uh, the results and I'm just interested in element 0 that's the first element then I can just specify I want to have a look at element 0 let's run this and now here it prints the whole list but here I'm just printing element 0 which is value 91 now we can have different uh, data types in a list so for example I can have a string and then an integer and maybe GPA in a floating point number or so let, let's for now let's just have strings so I'll have Tom get score 90 we get uh, Kate gets a score of 67 now let's have Bill gets a score of 47 and let's think of another name Carol gets a score of 85 so here I've got different data types in my elements and here I'm going to print just element 0 which now is Anne so let's run and see what happens here alright so you can see I can store different data types here now even though I use double quotes here it's outputting using single quotes don't worry about that <coughs> single quotes <coughs> contain a string just like double quotes okay now a neat thing is that it doesn't matter how long this list is we can always find the last element by using index minus one so let's this time now let's close this one let's instead of going for index zero which is always the first go for minus one which is always the last so let's put minus one there and run this and there we get 85 so minus one is the special index number which refers to the last element in the list now this element we can refer to by minus two so 
So if I want to see the next to last element in a list, then I can count down from minus one. And in this case, I'm going to put minus two. And in this case, I'll see, first of all, minus one will print 85, minus two will print Carol. And there we go. Now, if I want to add to the list, say I forget I've got a new student, I want to add this new student to the end of my list, I could do something like this. Uh, results dot append. Append means add to the end of the list. And let's port Sue. Have I got a Sue? No, let's have Sue here. So we're going to append Sue to the end of the list. So let's, if we append Sue to the end of the list, then if I print results minus one, then it will be Sue instead of uh, the number 85. So let's just do that. I'm going to copy and paste this here. And before I print, let's, let's print the whole list again after we've appended Sue to the list so we can see what we're, what we're doing here. And uh, let's run this one. All right, so you can see Sue was appended to the list. The original list contained these elements. The last element, minus 1, is 85. The next to last, minus 2, is Carol. But when we added Sue to the end of the list by appending to the results list the value Sue, then when we print the list again, you'll see Sue is at the end of the list. And now the new end of list value is Sue. I should say as well that you can either use minus one to access Sue at the end of the list, or you can give the index number starting from 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So if I use index 10, it will also print the value Sue. So let's print index 10 and we should see that it prints Sue for index 10. So here I'm printing index minus 1 and index 10. They're both referring to the same element in the list. Now before I go I just want to let you know that append is what's known as a list method. It's a method or a function that you can use with any list. Now to be able to use the append method you put the dot before append, you're going to use your brackets just like any other function and before the dot you have the name of your list. If your list is called results and you want to append to results then you type results dot append and in brackets whatever you want to append to the list. You could append a number or a string or any other value. Okay, I'm going to leave it at that point and I'll continue on the next movie to talk about other things you can do with lists.